Welcome to the Hilltop International Christian Center. Here, miracles happen every day. Prayer is our lifestyle. Where true worshipers gather to seek God. A dance of victory and the celebration of God's faithfulness. What joyous expressions! Here you will encounter God. shout. Yes, the choir said he lifts us high. He stretches us wide. And he's the reason that we are greater. Because greater is he that's in us. Say with me, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Your God is bigger than that problem. Hallelujah. That makes you bigger than the problem. So you are coming out on the other side better. Hallelujah. Help me congratulate someone by your side. Tell the person you are the right place at the right time. Congratulations. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We are going to read together. Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 14. All of us reading together. Please, I would prefer that we do it standing. Kind of drill that into our consciousness. So, if you will, let's do that standing. Are you ready? So, I will read one verse and then you will read the other. Alternately. It shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. All these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle the increase of thy king and the flock of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. They shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hands unto and it shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself as he had sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord thy God swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. The heaven to give rain unto thy land in a season. And to bless all the works of thine hands. And thou shalt lend unto many nations. And shall not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only and shall not be beneath. If thou shalt hearken unto the commandment of the Lord thy God. Which I commanded this day to observe and to do them. And all of us together. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them in Jesus mighty name. Thank you for your word father. We pray that you speak to us this morning and let every yoke be destroyed. 
And let every burden be lifted. Let your servant be your oracle, speaking and declaring your counsel. Confirm these words in the lives of your children for your glory and for our blessing. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And everybody said, Amen. Please put your hands together and be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now just to recap a little bit, when it comes to talking about blessings in the church, people are more comfortable with that and they love it. Everybody wants to be blessed and God wants us to be blessed. Praise the Lord. But you must remember that blessings is one side of a coin. There's another side. It's called curses. Just as you can't, dis you can't discuss light without discussing darkness, you cannot talk about curses, uh, blessings, without talking about curses. You cannot talk about cold without talking about hot. You can't talk about positive without talking about negative. In the same way, you cannot talk about blessings without talking about curses. So many people have said, no, don't mention that cost thing in this place. Don't mention that cost thing. God wants us blessed. God wants us blessed. God wants us blessed. But the reverse is, if we don't obey the commandment of the Lord our God, there is a reverse. There's a converse to the blessing. It is called the curses. And we have read it here in Deuteronomy 28 from verse 15 to the end. The Bible lists out the curses. In fact, in verse 15, if I will read it here, he says, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments, which all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And then he begins to list the curses. So, really, this is the introductory verse into the curses, just like verse 1 of Deuteronomy 28 is the introductory verse into the blessings. Alright? And we summarized all of these causes into continuous financial problems, remember? Chronic sicknesses and diseases. Family troubles, remember? Talk to me, somebody. You remember? Can you help me with something else that I have not mentioned? There were about five of them. Female problems, like barrenness, miscarriages, mental illnesses and instability, and vagabondism, wandering, jumping from place to place without having a place to rest. From job to job, job to job, job to job, from house to house, house to house, house to house, proposing to proposing to proposing to proposing. You love 10 women. I love you. Will you marry me? You go to another one. You have not closed the other door. I love you. Will you marry me? Before you know it, several people are pursuing you. There was a brother who did that while we were students in university. He proposed to three sisters and told them he loves them with his liver, his kidney, his intestine, his eyes, his ears, his nose, his eyebrows. He loves them with every fiber of his being. Today, he will go to this one's room. She will cook for and he will eat and make promises. Tomorrow you go to another one's room. She will cook for him. And he will make promises. As though their cooking was drawing it out. The next day you go to the third person and the cook. He will make promises. Until he graduated. And then it was time for his convocation. And the three sisters were preparing for their fiance. That look, I will paint this campus red. The kind of reception I'll do for him when he comes back. This one says, so who is the person? He mentioned the name. No, no. Ah, so this is good. This is, it's a small word. What a coincidence. Your fiancé is Chris. And my fiancé is Chris. So Chris who? They found out it was the same surname. Three of them. So they, they planned heavy duty welcome for him. So he's coming to do heavy convocation. No problem. He will pass these main gates. We are waiting. 
Unfortunately for them, he heard the news and he didn't come for his convocation. <laughs> That's true life story. So what was I about to say before I got excited and told you this story? Praise the name of Jesus. Well, today we are going to focus on something very vital in this dimension of freedom from causes. The same, you need to realize that there are two critical words that are very important in this subject. And those two critical words are power and authority. Say with me, power. power. Come on, say it. I want you to come with force. Power. Say it like Niger, power. power. Uh -huh. That's thinking now. Say authority. authority. Good. Power is force that moves things. Authority is the... Help me, lawyers. What's authority? The right to use power. That's what authority is. So if you went to the junction, for instance, and you saw a policeman or a policewoman, there are many of them now, thank God for them precious sisters in Nigeria, and she stands there and does like that, and a huge trailer waits at the instance of her command. She didn't do it by her power. If it was power, which is strength, she would have had to go out there and stop the vehicle from moving with her strength. That would be power working. But she did it with the authority of the government that has the power. So when she did this, it was the laws of Nigeria telling that trailer to wait. That's authority. The right to use power. So in Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verse 8, Jesus said something. He said, you shall receive power. That's actually power for real. After the Holy Ghost comes upon you, enabling you to be witnesses or proof producers unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. The word translated power there is the Greek word dunamis. It means miracle working power. The actual ability and capacity to do anything and everything. The Lord said, I will bequeath to you my power at the instance of the coming of the Holy Spirit. But prior to that, Jesus had spoken to his disciples in Luke 10, 19. He said something in Luke 10, 19. He said, I give unto you, the King James Version says, power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. But the word translated power there is not the Greek word dunamis. It's the Greek word exousia, which is more appropriately translated authority. So Jesus was saying in Luke 10, 19, I give unto you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy, all the powers, all the abilities, dunamis now, of the enemy. So with the authority of God, we can subdue the power of the enemy. Because then it's not our power. By authority, we channel the power of God to subdue the power of the enemy. When I was meant to be, and all God had in store for me. Many tribulations and Are you here or you've gone home? So in Ephesians 6 10, the Bible says, Be strong in the Lord, not in your strength. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, not your own power, not your own might. He has given you authority. To exercise his power. But even beyond that, because he now lives within you, you are one and the same with him. You are the bundle of his power plus his authority. Which gives you the winner's edge over every diabolical plan of the enemy. Hallelujah. Now, when you bring it down to authority, the supreme source of authority is God himself. 
And then from God, that authority flows to, through the Godhead to the Son. So 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, which is the Son, and the Spirit. So the authority flows from the Father. It goes to the Son. And then it goes to the Holy Spirit. And then that authority is channeled to mankind. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, his son, who was given authority, did something with that authority. Matthew 28, verse 18. Matthew 28, verse 18. Let's see what his son did with that authority with respect to us. Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Actually, all authority is given unto me in heaven and earth. I have taken it back. And then he says, Go ye therefore into all the world. And then he says, I am with you always, even unto the end. So you can see that Jesus received it from the Father. And then he passed it to his disciples. And you are his disciple today. Say, I have authority. Come on, say it. Say, I have authority. Come on, say it like you mean it. I have authority. Say again, say, I have authority. So Jesus delegates that authority to us. We are now his delegates. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, in the Bible, there is a term that the Bible often uses to denote a person who exercises authority. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3 tells us what that term is. A particular word that the Bible uses to denote somebody who is in authority. It says, but I would have you know that the head, say head. Come on, say it. Say head. Head. Good. So you don't think I'm saying something else. It means head. The head, that word head is used often by the scriptures to denote someone in authority. So it says the head of every man is Christ. This man here means male. Alright? And the head of the woman is the man. Male. And the head of Christ is God. So is that authority flow we mentioned earlier, but we are walking it back. Now if you take this in context, this verse of scripture, and uh, you live with the impression, if you have not used this scripture in alignment with other scriptures, you will live with the impression that every male has authority over every female. But that's not what that, this text is saying. If you handle it in context, more appropriately it will read, that the head of every husband is Christ. And the head of every wife is her husband. Do you get me? So you are not the head of my wife. If I catch you anywhere around. So there it is. The husband has authority over his wife and in his home over his children. As a matter of fact, that authority is an extension of the authority of the father to the son in the Trinitarian arrangement. So it's a very serious authority. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, this analogy of headship is very critical to what we are doing this morning. Because the father figure, the husband figure is a very vital instrument in the discharge or the release of blessings and the release of curses. Every father is empowered, empowered to unleash blessings upon his wife as a husband. 
and upon his children as a father. But there's something you must remember. The same virtue that can convey the blessing also has a converse dimension to be able to convey curses. So the authority of the father that blesses can also curse if it is not properly used. The Bible says he is the God and father who makes alive and who kills. It also says that he is the God who is a God of mercy but he is also a God of judgment. Can someone say amen? So, one of the most important truths you are going to find out where blessings and curses is concerned is that authority, a person in authority can bless you and a person in authority can curse you. It's the same virtue that will sustain the flow. It depends on if it's being used positively or if it is being used negatively. So in Genesis 27, in Genesis 27, Esau speaks to, Jacob, Isaac speaks to Esau and says to Esau, go and make me venison. Make me the kind that I love because I want to bless you, but you need to draw it out. And then the mother of the boys, the twin boys, speaks to Jacob and says, quick, 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 quick. Go and get me a lamb. I'm, I'm going to prepare it. Let it look like and taste like venison. So that you can re re receive the blessing. But Jacob is scared. But eventually it happens. And the blessing of the father comes upon Jacob. Until date, over the generations, you will see the blessing of the father telling on Israel as a nation. Till date, every Israelite individually... And every Israelite corporately, they have come under blessings, those blessings over the generation. The blessing comes from the one in authority. So again, in Genesis 31, we see the record of how Jacob. Jacob is now living his father-in-law called Laban who is also his uncle and upon leaving Laban after all that Laban passed him through he lives secretly like they will say in the military he lives by stilt and then Laban finds out that Jacob is living in Mesopotamia and he has left his household and carried everyone unbeknownst to him. So he mobilizes his people and then they begin to pursue Jacob and they round him off on the mountain of Gilead. And when they got there, Laban, in his trickery, looks for something to hold on to. He wants to tie Jacob down. So he says to Jacob, you stole my gods. And Jacob speaks up and said, no, I don't worship your God and I did not steal your gods. He says, your, your, your caravan has my gods inside. Jacob says, now you search. If you find your gods inside anything in my caravan or with any member of my caravan, let the person that you find that with, let the person die. Unbeknownst to him, Rachel stole them and hid them inside the sack of food and sat on top of it. And when it was time to search where Rachel was seated, Rachel said, I'm not standing up because this is my period. So she sits down knowing what is in there. But Jacob her husband, who has the authority of the husband, had made an utterance that inadvertently had brought a curse on Rachel. It was not deliberate. 
He probably didn't know the consequences. But he said the person will die. Ladies and gentlemen, shortly after, Rachel had her first child. And during the second child, when she was in labor, she died. And it came to pass what her husband, who had authority over his wife, said. That the person that had the gods will die. Laban did not find it. They didn't find it that day. Jacob may not have known the consequence of what he said. Because he taught everybody in his caravan they were innocent. But ignorance does not excuse manifestations. As a matter of fact, that is what the devil wants. For my people perish for lack of knowledge. If the devil can keep you in the dark, you will keep empowering him against yourself without knowing. Are you still here, somebody? Are you still here? So this was the effect of the cause and the woman died as a result of the words that were uttered by her husband. Her husband's authority had exacted the manifestation of the cause. You can see all of this in Genesis 35 from verse 16 to 19. How Richard died in labor. And this is traceable to the authority of the husband. Because the Lord had promised Jacob longevity and he lived long. Jacob did not die early. He lived very long. But his wife died young. Because he had released the authority. And again. Rachel could not in any way build any wall of resistance against the cause. Because in the first place, she has even violated the first commandments. Thou shalt not make any idol. So she was open. When that cause was issued, it landed. Because you see, a curse, causeless, cannot land. If she was innocent the integrity of her heart and her innocence would have defended her. Because the Bible says that the integrity of the righteous will protect him. Can somebody say amen? amen? So in God's plan for marriage, the husband and wife, they become one flesh. And the man being the head can exercise authority over the wife. And you can either bless her or curse your wife what, whichever one you activate is what manifests when I was meant to be and all God had in store for me many tribulations to order for this message please request for the message number above you can also request for other messages by Reverend Chris Oare when you call 084-779-290 0803-182-6714 0803-182-6712 or 0803-182-6702 For more details about Reverend Chris Oare, the Hilltop International Christian Center and other products and programs, please visit our website www.hilltopinternational.org